Africa Tech Challenge, it's a, it's a competition which is coupled with training uh, being done by the Chinese government uh, through AVIC International. Um, the, the arrangement is there to facilitate skills exchange with the African countries. So they are in existence in a number of African countries, which include Zimbabwe. So they organize an annual uh, competition, training function, and invite a number of African countries. So we happen to see ourselves here in, uh, in Kenya and Zimbabwe. Uh, what are you guys being trained on specifically? Uh, they are training, like in our case, it focuses more on skills uh, development or skills capacitation for the manufacturing sector. Uh, to be specific, uh, they are targeting the use of computer, computerized systems, which also include the use of uh, co computer numerical controlled machines, CNC lathe machining. It started in 2014, uh, and uh, we, we, managed, we, were the we participated in the first. And uh, in the 16th, we, we, were, we were the best. We were the best team in 2016 for the, I think, the third African Tech Challenge. 2018, we also emerged the best in 2018, African Tech Challenge, RVTTI. And uh, one of our students who, who, uh, who was taken as the best student then is currently is called Kenneth Kipto, currently in China, uh, doing his scholarship awarded from the ATC. ATC normally does three things. They, 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 are, they train the students first, and then they award the best team that is on the end of the challenge. We have an exam, which is done, and then the best team is chosen from there, and also the best individual is chosen and then given an award and a scholarship. And the, the, the best team is uh, given an award, and the institution normally get something also through, uh, through the machines and through some tenders awarded to them as a reward. I'm engineer Mark Kapasam Timoshi. I'm coming from Zambia. I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a lecturer at Northern Technical College in Zambia. So the team I'm representing is basically the Zambian team. Thank you. Quite, quite a heavy flag to, to fly in this competition. Uh, I mean, eighth edition of ATC. And um, so far, from a lecturer's perspective, because essentially you guys are molding students who are going into the workforce out there, uh, what has been the impact of, of such a competition thus far in Zambia? Okay, first and foremostly, it's quite interesting. Uh, the training itself, first of all, has been quite intensive. And uh, for that, I can say every team that is participating in this competition is a winner because uh, talking about it, of course, we have been equipped with a lot of knowledge and skill and that is quite impressive and of course this opportunity makes it uh, uh, give us some more chance also. One, uh, if in case we won, of course it's going to provide the students with a lot of opportunities some can get scholarships and other than that, as an institution, if we won, we'll feel very proud because that we can uh, award us with a contract where we'll be able to do certain jobs and that will raise the revenue of the college and we'll be able to uh, improve upon the services that we are offering as an institution. Uganda is quite an interesting country. Uh, for you, uh, um in terms of manufacturing especially, because this particular competition is geared towards manufacturing, where are we as a country in Uganda and what do you think this particular challenge can help solve that particular problem? Uh, I know we can't, like, it, like it can't be a one-time thing and then all of a sudden we change the country. But uh, I want to first tell you that we came here without knowing anything like a lot about the CNC's. Uh, we, we are so lucky that in my school they brought them this year but we've not been having any knowledge about them. We try reading manuals but things couldn't connect so well. Uh, but we got this opportunity to come and be part of this challenge and we've learnt a lot and I must assure my country that we are coming with a lot in our brains that can change and can help a lot of Ugandans. Uh, but nevertheless, I urge still the country to protect, 
this because in my country production is not really as uh, a lot as such but if we take on this then we can change the country and we can be a better Africa in the near future yes we can be a better Africa we can be a better Uganda because if they continue sending students to this because in one of my interviews uh, weeks back I, I asked if in the near future Avi can contain at least more than one team uh, from each country and then as time goes on they even contain more than that like we can have even more than five teams from each country we just pray that one time it will be like that it will help a lot because imagine we are just four people from Uganda and then I feel like it, if like a, a given place needs us how shall we divide ourselves if that place needs us every day and then another place needs us also another one? So if we have a very big number of people into this thing, then we can be a better Uganda. Looking at Zimbabwe as a country, why is this a necessary engagement? What does it mean for the Zimbabwe's manufacturing sector? Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this, is, this is going to be to have uh, large, large bearing fruits in the process of re-industrialization of Zimbabwe. In what sense? If you look at um, the Africa free trade area, it uh, gives the opportunity for Zimbabwe to export products within the African region, but the major focus will be on the quality of products. So this kind of um, initiative will improve the skills development for human capital and also to speak the TVET development process is the backbone of industrialization of many economies, especially if we look at the global development trend. And also if we look at uh, the fourth industrial development, which is a global initiative, we need to take our, our role as Africans. So this, um, at this extent of uh, this kind of initiative by, uh, by China to African countries, we see it as a, as a positive development in building our manufacturing capacity as Africans. Uh, so far, where are we as a country? From your assessment, um, are we well positioned to be able to do all the necessary manufacturing within the borders of Kenya so that we can get that value from any, any, any value chain? Yes, uh, as a country, I can position us, we are not part of, we are on the journey. We are not yet there because what was missing first was a goodwill. We, we had not that, we, we had not developed a culture where we can say made in Kenya is a satisfying product. Uh, parts made in Kenya, we had not, be, we, we had not gotten that pride of saying, yes, this is made from our country and it can work. So we are, the first thing we are, we are doing here, we are trying to develop the human resource, the re required skills so that we can get that. So I think we are somewhere because starting from the education, educational journey, like what is coming now, that is the CBZ on the way. In the tertiary level, we have the CPET, and the government has said that September is fully CPET admission. So I think we are positioned very well to develop our skills, our human resource, and then as a country now, we will position ourselves in a better place to do a lot of manufacturing. Uh, I feel from an academic perspective, there was sort of a revolution with, uh, I can't call it glorification of uh, university education, but it came with that. And um, over the past 20, 30 years, we saw sort of an erosion of skills-based training. And we went into intellect-based training, you know? Um, I don't know whether it was similar in Zambia because here I'm referencing Kenya. And there is now a push to get people back to skills training, uh, TVET institutions. Is it a similar case in Zambia? Well, partially it is and partially not, but of course it's partially like that. Uh, you see what has been happening is with the modern student. The focus of the modern student is more focused on uh, getting a profession where you easily get into the employment world. Because obviously their focus is that immediately they finish their training, they would want to get uh, an income so that they can be able to support uh, themselves. But with the trend that has taken place over time, of course there's been a change as we have seen. Uh, we are talking about now uh, employment comes in uh, 
so many ways. It's not only that it has to be formal, you know. These guys, other than the skills that we are giving them, we are, we are also training them to be entrepreneurs. And by being entrepreneurs, we mean that when they get the skill, they can be able to use that skill and then form maybe small companies, uh, say SMEs. And when they start from those SMEs, they will be able to raise a lot of funds and they can be also become employers of other youth. Um, right now, the conversation on the continent is about Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement and area. And we're trying to manufacture and process our own raw products. What we produce in Uganda, value add in Uganda, and manufacturing comes in very handy in that process. Uh, what do you think the skills that you gain here will help uh, the country in regards to expediting that process on the larger context? Number one, uh we are going to bridge that gap where we've been having graduates come to the field without any skills. Now, we are encouraging the, the graduates with hands-on skill. Number two is it will reduce on this thing of the country always hiring experts to come and be the ones to help in manufacturing, to always buy a lot of products from out. That makes it so expensive. And even for the local people to, to afford, it becomes so expensive and then all of a sudden you find that the country is still economic, like the economy is not good at all. But now when we, uh, we get involved as us, that means we cannot be as expensive as somebody they are going to hire from out. And then it will be easier for the country to, to take on this. It, for example, the country can even can make us like teach other people you get. So instead of people always going like very far to learn these things and then you know, the country incurs in a lot of costs of, ex of, of paying them tuition and so on, we find that now that we have the knowledge, we can also help other people learn this at a cheaper cost. Just, just looking at uh, the status quo, because uh, for example, referencing Kenya as a country, uh, we have a, a challenge of exporting raw materials and importing finished products. And it seems to be a challenge across the African continent. Uh, maybe talk to us what this portends for the economy of Africa, especially just making sure that you are processing our own raw materials from where you said. Okay, uh, thank you. It's a, it's a very good question. Uh, I, would, I would respond to this in the, from two dimensions. One, we need to prepare ourselves in terms of uh, building capacity, um, make sure that we train looking into the future. We should also train focusing on, 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 on producing uh, graduates that have the mindset of developing or creating employment, not seeking employment. Then also the other perspective that we can look at it is uh, African governments there is need to develop a deliberate move from a police perspective. The police that are led to the uh, establishment of uh, business enterprises, starting from the small enterprises. Because if we look at the big enterprise, like we talk of Toyota as, a, as an example, they started small. We talk of Ford Motor Industries, they started as a small company. But if we do not have government support, policy position that focuses on industrialization of uh, these small enterprises we will not get the desired results. We will not see ourselves as Af Africans developing manufacturing capacity, developing our own products that can compete on the world market. In Zambia, is there also a similar approach where there's been less value addition because of less industrialization and will this kind of training change that trajectory? Certainly, that is where we are moving as a world in general or uh, the continent Africa itself because that is the only way. You see, when we sell raw materials, we sell them at a very cheap price. But if we had to make and manufacture the products and then we sell the products, then that way we are going to revitalize our economies and that is for sure the only way we can go about it. See there are representations from uh, very many African countries here. Uh, I don't know whether it's fostering healthy competition, uh, but uh, for you uh, representing Team Kenya, 
uh, talk to me about uh, what this means and also seeing our African brothers from different uh, countries mean for the, for the whole endeavor. Yes, yes. First of all, we are proud. Hosting this means we are better and we are better placed. Like, for example, Kenyan teams are 10 and, the whole, uh, uh, and others, I think they are 9. We have 9 countries being here from, uh, from the flags you can see there. We have 9 countries here. When Kenya hosting it means Kenya is better placed for this. Uh, there is another competition called World Skills next week. And uh, it is also, we are targeting to host it. Ke Kenya is targeting to host it around 2027. But hosting this shows us that we are better placed. So Kenya, we are very happy that we are, we are hosting this. That means we have the capacity. Yeah. And uh, as we finish up, engineering, it's sort of a mainstay for the men uh, generally, a uh, male-dominated sector. Uh, we've seen, like locally here in Kenya, we're encouraging ladies to pursue STEM subjects and enter into such fields. Uh, what do you think, what is the status in Uganda in that regard? And are you trying to sort of uh, shift that narrative? Actually, it's so interesting that uh, one of the reasons I joined the engineering field is uh, with hope that in the near future I'll be a very good engineer, a super engineer that will be an inspiration to very many ladies and youth out there because when a lady sees me in the near future when i'm all over media speaking a lot of sense in engineering all of them will get inspired because they'll be like if she did it then i can do it if she's just a lady and the fact that i'm small bodied of course they'll describe me by weight they'll be like that small girl all that in her brain so i i feel like I can inspire a lot of ladies out there and then ladies will stop this business of being desperate all over because they have to always get support from men, you get. But when you come in the field, you get to know that even you, you can do it. You as a lady, you can also do manufacturing. You as a lady, you can also be in engineering. Then you'll stop being desperate. Yes. Definitely. Is Uganda winning this uh, edition of uh, ATC? I'm super confident we are taking it. Okay. Yes. I'm rooting for Kenya. 